Um, well, now we have the honor to have a visionary from Silicon Valley here with us, the legendary Subra Ear. Subra? Oh, here he's coming. Subra is the co-founder and CEO of Webex, and now he has a new company, Moxtra. And to moderate this conversation, this is going to be a conversation, we have Harold Batista, a board member of Bay Brazil. I told you in the beginning that I'm counting uh, on a lot of help from incredible people that I've met here in the region. And Harold has been a wonderful friend, supporter, and it's an honor also to have Harold as a board member helping us to shape Bay Brazil. And actually, I'll be using a couple of different microphones, right? Oh, a couple? Yeah. Okay. This is fine here. It's all yeah, right. This is fine. Okay. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. How's everyone doing? Everyone's great? I don't know, some of you guys were there last year and I was the crazy guy throwing soccer balls at all of you guys. Some of you guys remember that? Uh, this is just a reminder that there are only 303 days to go to the World Cup. So, right? <laughs> exactly. 300 days. Make sure you get your tickets. You have several challenges. Getting there, right? Staying there and then getting tickets for the games themselves. Uh, David Espindola and I, a very good friend of me, uh, we already have our flights. At least we have one of the three challenges down, right? So, got to think ahead. Another thing, last year when I talked to you guys, I was, actually let me move over here to the other microphone, I was, I had donated at the Stanford Blood Center 15 and a half gallons. And since then, I got this t-shirt here from the Stanford Blood Center, it was another four gallons, so I got a Four Seasons Club uh, 2013 shirt. I'm very proud of that. Thank you. Uh, I'm repeat, I've reached 16 gallons. I didn't do this all at once, of course. It took me. <laughs> If you're supposed to, you know, give it your all when you're giving blood, don't give it your all, okay? Just give a pint. So, in behalf of the Stanford Blood Center or any blood center around the world, uh, please give generously. People need you. It's important, okay? Having said that, I'm really honored to have Subra here. Subra, in my mind, at least, he's a legend. And what I'm going to do, um, I'm very excited to talk about the several things about with Subra with you guys. And this is really for you and to get to know Subra. I have the privilege of uh, being with Subra many times to talk to him. But this will be a conversation between me and him, and I'm gonna give you some ideas of where Subra is coming from. I'll be talking about three topics. Number one, WebEx. How many of you guys use WebEx or are familiar with WebEx? Raise your hands. Thank you. Wow, this is the vast majority of you, that's fantastic. So he created uh, WebEx in 1999, right? And then in the year 2007, he sold uh, WebEx for 3.2 billion to Cisco. At which time Cisco paid him an additional money to stay for another two years. Why? Because he was the visionary. He was going to take the product further uh, down its uh, product development cycle. So for, in 2009, Subra retired. And then two year, about a year ago, Subra and his daughter, and you correct me, of course, Subra, if I'm wrong with the whole story here, but his daughter was on Facebook. And his daughter was uh, doing, trying to do homework on Facebook. But she had a problem doing homework on Facebook. In other words, she was trying to share documents, spreadsheets, Word documents, etc. And then it turned out to be because it was difficult to do this on Facebook, Subra and his daughter Dina came up with an idea of creating a solution for that. And this was the beginning of a story called Mokstra. So what you're about to see is, I'm going to show you a little bit of Mokstra. And by the way, one promise uh, that I had to Subra was that I was going to increase the downloads of Mokstra after this presentation, right? <laughs> so right now, they started, Mokstra started in February of this year. There are 400,000 downloads so far, right, Andrea? So after this meeting, in the next 10, 20 minutes, I expect 400,150, okay? I'm counting on all of you, please. So let me show you a little video of what Mokstra is. But of course, after you download, you will love it as well. But let me just give you a little intro.
works with that? Mockstra makes it easy to add a voiceover. Narrate the contents of your binder. I like this third set of lights. What do you think? Getting people on the same page has never been easier. Once you've created your binder and are satisfied with the way it looks, share it with your friends and family. Share view-only binders with one person or many, or invite other Mockstra members to contribute to a collaborative binder. Your binder. Share selectively. Mockstra gets a four and a half a star rating on the App Store. It's a super exciting product, right? And like I said, a thousand of reviews. I want you guys all to download. As a matter of fact, you won't be able to leave this building unless I see that you have Mockstra either on your iPhone, your uh, web, etc. So before I start actually asking Subra a couple of questions, I'd like to give you a story of myself. I used to work at PeopleSoft in the year 2004. At that time, we got acquired through a hostile takeover by Larry Allison Oracle, initiated in the year 2004, a hostile takeover of PeopleSoft. That hostile takeover lasted a year and a half, and David Duffield, the founder of PeopleSoft, he fought it with, you know, he really didn't want to be acquired by uh, Oracle. In the end, though, Larry Ellison won out. So in the year 2005, uh, in the mid of 2005, Larry Ellison took over PeopleSoft. And David Duffett was, you know, this is crazy. This is my baby. I lost it. And what he did in revenge, he created another company called, who knows what it is? Workday. Workday.com. And if you guys don't know this, uh, he sold, I think, PeopleSoft at that time for two and a half billion or something like this. But when he started Workday, it came in actually as a blessing in disguise because see, there was no more baggage, let's say, from PeopleSoft because PeopleSoft rode the client server wave. Yeah, in 2005, there was a new wave, which was cloud computing, right? So what he did then is he created a new company called Workday and he went public last year with Workday.com and it went public at a market cap of $13 billion. Right? The reason why I'm bringing this is because it reminds me a little bit of what Subra is doing, right? in the sense that his exit was much more positive. Right? You had a great relationship with uh, John Chambers from Cisco. But in many ways, what Subra is able to do is he, start, he's able, he was able to start WebEx from ground zero. But this, way, this time, the wave that we're riding is called Mobile First, or Mobile Best, I should say. So everything you can expect from WebEx, you can expect from Mokstra. But much more. So once again, download, enjoy it. And so, uh, Subra, <laughs> first questions to you, uh, uh, Subra. Uh, why did you create WebEx, and where did that name come from? Um, I um, well, the, but there's a backstory to WebEx, of course. Right? I started my career in the early days at Intel. Uh, I would say, you know, in the early uh, 1980s, and that was the time, of course, the PC was born, and we were imagining what networks would do, local area networks, etc. And I was part of the all Ethernet crusade uh, that Intel, Dex, Xerox got together. Uh, you know, they were co competing um, uh, sort of standards with token ring and token bus, token ring from IBM, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, so we imagined about how the world would be when it's all connected. Um, and uh, then, you know, so that was during the 80s. And by the end of the 80s, I thought, you know, the network revolution was over. And then I moved to Apple. And I was working part of the Newton Group. Uh, we worked on the Newton handheld, uh, you know, uh, personal digital uh, assistant, PDAs, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, the pad, Newton pad, again, we were ahead of time. And so around, you know, 95, of course, you know, I sort of ended that journey. You know, we were too early to market, as you know, with the Newton. And then I looked around me and I saw that networking was really taking off. And what I thought was sort of done was not had not even begun. Um, anyway, so these are sort of some of the insights, and uh, so at that time we launched a company, uh, you know, so earlier company which was called TalkShow. Uh, we had client server software doing meetings, uh, and then Microsoft came with uh, NetMeeting and every browser, and of course everyone thought the world was, it was done. But because of my early experience, I knew that it wasn't done, it had just begun. And in fact, uh, it was sort of a restart to TalkShow. Uh, because of all the things we learned in talk show of why it didn't fit as client software, we were able to do in WebEx and launch it as a service. You know, and so that sort of kicked off the whole software as a service revolution. Uh, but it was all because of all the other failed <laughs> attempts, so to speak, before. Um, and in the early days when we, you know, when I pitched it to most venture capitalists, I mean, they thought we were crazy because, you know, Microsoft had a net meeting in every browser and they, and, you know, they thought we were clueless. Uh, but having worked 
and having tried to sort of make it work, we had all the insights as to why that wouldn't work. And that's sort of the story behind Webex. Um, we were looking for a catchy name, of course, which was sort of easy for people to understand. And FedEx was about you know sending documents, etc., uh, you know physically. And we were going to send you know exchange documents over the web. So we said Webex, and I thought FedEx would sue us, but they didn't. So, so the X came from FedEx, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the web came. Yes. Which web. actually, when I was to ask you, Moxra, how did Moxra came about? Well, Moxra was Mobile X, and then I said, okay, Mobile X didn't work, and Mobile X didn't sound really good, and so you know, but there was a dominant X, and Mobile was Mobile. And then we did, and it was a lot more than WebEx, so we said Mobile X with a lot of extras. So, you know, okay. that would be two syllables. So. Excellent. And uh, so um, Mark Benioff, which is a good friend of yours, yeah. right, he considers a, uh, Subra IR the founder of SaaS, software as a service, because WebEx was actually really the first one where you could buy the service, you know, software as a service, and it allowed everyone to do, if you're in sales, you're able to do now presentations. You, need to do, as a, you didn't need to travel that much, right? You could do all your presentations, your sales presentations on your desk and have people in the far distance. So um, this next wave, uh, help me understand, how, uh, what's the difference between the web wave versus the mobile wave? What do you see are the difference between those two? Well, let's come back to WebEx. I think, yes, one of the things that WebEx did, besides, of course, everybody sees it as web conferencing, uh, was really uh, create a whole new uh, go-to-market uh, capability for software. Uh, people don't understand that before uh, there was the internet and the way uh, to go to market, uh, so to speak, you know, you had to either sell through retail, uh, you know, uh, in those days, business level, et cetera, or you had to hire expensive uh, salespeople who sort of now immediately meant that the price points that you sell software was really high. Um, and uh, so, so and then there was this thing called telesales, but you couldn't sell software on telesales, so very marginally so, because, you know, you can't describe it. And what WebEx did was enable that whole ability to touch a customer, even remotely, and uh, so expanded the whole telesales experience to a web sales experience, which I call, which actually enables SaaS, because people don't really understand that to sell software as a service on a subscription basis, uh, the only way that you can afford that is by having a uh, telesales or web sales organization. And if there was no web conferencing, there is no web sales. <laughs> and yes, uh, Salesforce was our biggest customer, was a, one of our earliest customers hmm. and one of our largest customers. Uh, and so they really truly exploited the use of web conferencing and did a phenomenal job. So, uh, so and of course, we didn't uh, con conceive of the, uh, you know, the grand sort of uh, wave it would, uh, it would cause, but we had the insight that we couldn't sell in a traditional way so we were going to use WebEx to sell, support, service, train, et cetera, et cetera. And as a result, achieve a totally, totally different uh, business model or price points, et cetera, which has made it successful. Um, you know, again, the Boxster the sort of uh, uh, inspiration goes back to my Newton days. Uh, and, you know, we thought of all those wonderful things Newton would do, which, which it didn't do, but now it can do, so to speak. Uh, because you know the form factors there, the networks are there, the capabilities are there, um, and uh, you, you know so this device, uh, uh, the smartphone, of course, is you know uh, is a communication device, and then when you add the tablet, then it's a content device. So when you add content and communications, then it gets very interesting as to what you do with content and how you sort of weave content together. And now you see people actually. I mean, obviously, the first step of migration is from. Uh, you know, using voice to, you know, text and now text with photos. But then you got to think what are the next two steps. If you're sending photographs or, you know, pay, uh, different types of digital content, uh, how does, you know, now the user is sort of maintaining the context of all that, me you know, content that's coming at them and how do you sort of maintain that continuity? And that's sort of the inspiration behind WebEx. So, I mean, behind Moxa, sorry. Which is, how, you know, if you're getting all this content, how do you sort of put it together? Uh, you know, how do you maintain context? How do you maintain con continuity? So that instead of having these sto uh, sto uh, stovepipe fragmented uh, pieces of conversation, how does it become a rich conversation wherein the con you know you're able to keep? And that's the inspiration behind 
boxa. And the metaphor here is a binder. Uh, you know, if you look at the iPad, you see the metaphor of a magazine rack, you know, which, are, which is content being given to you in one way. You see the metaphor of a book, again, content coming to you one way. Uh, you know, you see the metaphor of notebooks where you write. But the binder, if you really go look at your, uh, you know, or those who are much older, when I was an Intel, I used to carry binders to my uh, you know, customers. Uh, you assemble content which your customer needed. There was a PowerPoint presentation, there were data sheets, there were other notes, et cetera, et cetera, that you had to assemble on the fly. And that assembly, didn't, you didn't just do it, you know, you had people helping you do it, et cetera, and you delivered it. And there was a conversation that, in, uh, that ensued as a result of that. And that conversation was, you know, led to potentially sales. So now these devices uh, afford you the capability to maintain that context, maintain the continuity, and be much more efficient in managing all those time-sliced uh, conversations that you're having, uh, and as a result, be much more efficient in sales support service. And the metaphor that we sort of deliver it under is the binder. It's really it's underlying what to pull these this kind of communication together. Fantastic. I was at uh, Evernote a couple of weeks ago, and you guys know that Evernote, or some of you know that Evernote has reached now the 70 million download mark, right? I mean, these guys are having downloads like fantastic, and one of the top reasons is because it's a fantastic product. And as I was talking to them, and I was doing some comparison, I realized that Mox was actually a little bit ahead on the curve in terms of downloads. So the expectations for Moxer is one million dollars uh -huh. by the end of this year. Yes. And uh, actually, a lot of this comes from Brazil, right? I think uh, the number is 30%. If, uh, yes, in fact, very, very, you know, that's exactly right. You know, in the 10 years, even 10 years ago, you used to do said you had to win the US market, and then you went to Europe, and then you went to the rest of the world. Um, now, uh, the world has changed so dramatically that uh, I would say, yeah, about 30% of our downloads from day one were from Brazil. Uh, so we're trying to learn Portuguese quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who knows so Portuguese? Yeah, right. Um, and also the usage, I mean, the, the users are much more actively engaged. I mean, they, they, they sort of interact with you, they ask for more, and, I, you know, it's just, uh, it's just different. Um, and I think the environment, uh, the, uh, well, the feeling I get is uh, from a, the population is much more collaborative. They want to interact with each other. Uh, and that's sort of the feeling I get. Or just to give you guys a flavor of like doing business in Brazil. So for instance, I'm working with several clients in Brazil that are using Salesforce.com. And we're working on getting these two products together. One of them is Prudentials, the other one is Marsh, the other one is Zurich International in Brazil, right? And uh, once again, they already leapfrog in technologies. They're all going to the cloud. They all want mobile, yet mobile is a challenge for them, right? So this is kind of like an example of where Salesforce.com and Moxtra is a great solution for Brazilian companies. But let me tell you another story, which is an interesting one for me. I'm working with a startup in Brazil called Conta Azul. Conta Azul is kind of like, a, it's one of the most successful Brazilian startups. And what they do, they have about 25,000 uh, clients. And they're a little bit like an ERP financials for micro businesses to small businesses. And what's interesting with them is that their clients are usually moms and pops, and they only speak Portuguese in Brazil. Brazil is tough to find people that speak English, right? And so one of the things which was fantastic for us and offering them a Moxtra, because what they're gonna do with Moxtra is the following is, they're gonna use the free version, right, and use it with their 100 salespeople. They have 100 salespeople, and each one of those 100 salespeople is independent. Now, these folks, they make about five calls to clients every week. But the problem is that those calls have to be, you know, they knock on the door and they talk to these people. But now, because those independent sales reps, they have uh, uh, Androids and they have iPhones, they will be able to, tr oh, they're going to work from, instead of five meetings per week, they're going to have 15. Because they're going to be able to do their presentations now via their iPhone. And that's going to increase the productivity, of course, right? And it's all coming to the cloud. So this is one of the examples of those leapfrog technologies that would allow a company in Brazil to do this. And the best part is all in Portuguese. Yes. Because Mogstra came download, it comes downloaded in 18 languages right out of the box. Right, so I think it's kind of like uh, Super is one of those rare individuals that rode one big wave, which was the, the, the you know, cloud-based uh, wave, but now there's an even bigger wave, which is mobile. If I was to ask you, uh, Subra, what were the, for us here, for all of us to learn, what were some of the lessons learned of your successful journey at WebEx? What would you like to share with us? Well, I guess, um, uh, you know, it came from insights that, you know, that was all from the past experience. Um, one of the insight, uh, one of the advantages we had was nobody was willing to fund us. We, so as a result of it, we had to figure out a way to create a sort of a consulting business 
uh, which funded us, but in, in the end, which gave us a lot more sustaining uh, power. Uh, you know, at that time, the whole, uh, at the time of the internet, I mean, all the write-up was about how people were going to be eliminated from the sales process, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so when we went and pitched something like WebEx, people thought, you know, we were crazy. Um, but as time turned out, that, that was not true. So I think that, uh, ha you know, having some insight and, you know, having a feeling it strongly enough that you don't get det deterred was one of the factors that really worked for us. Um, as, and uh, the second thing that worked really well as a result thereof, like people talk about team, et cetera, et cetera, we didn't have the luxury of going and hiring a city for a superstar team. We had to create a star team. And so uh, most of the people were unknown by when we created it, but they had the right attitude and they wanted to work. And if you think about, you know, uh, the late, uh, about 98, 99, it was very hard to hire pe people. Uh, but the people who sort of uh, came into the team, they played with the product, they loved the product, and that was the one unifying factor. And so the, so the team, as people say, was, which was very important, but actually worked out very well for us because everybody was sort of uh, really passionate about the product. And I think uh, that's something that even now I sort of follow at Moxa, which is, you know, a lot of people come and say, say they're very interested, but then I look if they really use the product or not. Uh, and like you, you really use the product, that's oh, why we connected. Uh, because uh, it is a crusade, I mean, you gotta get passionate about what you're doing, and you gotta get into it to understand it's not gonna solve all things for all people, but if you're really into it, you understand where it fits and where it doesn't fit. And as a result, you can be much better at sort of uh, talking to, who, understanding who your customers are and what use cases they do. So I think these are you know, critical elements of you know, our success. I know also you hired some of the top, all the, the, the WebEx guys back to your team, right? The top 30 guys. But in fact, many of them are there, right? Raise your hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody from Oxtra, there they are, right? So how is John Chambers feeling about this at Cisco? <laughs> well, let's, uh, I would say it's slightly differently. I didn't hire them, they hired me, meaning, uh, you know, uh, right from the time that I sort of sold uh, WebEx, uh, there were a lot of people from WebEx saying, okay, so what's your next act and how can we get in on it? Uh, you know, and in fact, uh, many of my sort of good friends from WebEx were urging me to get out of retirement so they could sort of engage in something meaningful. Uh, so <laughs> I would say, uh, yeah, and that worked out. So it had to be the right theme. It had to be something that you get inspired by. And so, yes, as a result thereof, you know, a lot of the people from WebEx, uh, and as like you said, the story of my daughter, yes, that was sort of part of the inspiration, but a lot of the inspiration also came from the WebEx folks who sort of were working on mobility and what does uh, collaboration mean in the world of mobility, et cetera, et cetera. So we were supposed to be able to merge, the, merge those visions together to create what we have today. Fantastic. Yeah. Jeff Bezos from Amazon.com, he's building a, a clock that is gonna last 10,000 years. And the reason why he's building this is because he believes that we're all too caught up in short-term thinking. And I think one of the benefits that Subaru has is that he has the luxury, no, actually he, he put himself in a situation where he has the luxury of looking over many years ahead, five, 10, 20 years out. I would argue is all the conversation we had so far about Brazil, we need to do the same thing. Right, it's important to look at the country in the long perspective, and I think from that perspective, Brazil is incredible as a choice, right? And I think for Moxa, it's gonna be incredible for us as well. What I'd like to do is open it up for you guys. Questions to Subra. You have a question? Yes. I'm wondering, uh, Subra. Yeah. Yeah. What do you see as the next big thing? <laughs> Monster. What kind of is that? <laughs> you know, um, well, there are broad trends. I think the whole, um, uh, as I said, the mobility trend, you know, these devices are fundamentally different. Uh, so I would say that, uh, you know, the, again, they were imagined in my history, they were, uh, 20 years ago, Newton. Uh, I was launched, right? 
So we imagined how it would be a PDA and it would work and I was 20 years younger. Uh, and uh, you know, we thought of the iPad and what it could do. Uh, and now it's only, uh, you know, it's now only now being realized and all of those things we imagine the sort of, <laughs> right? So to answer your question, I think it's the younger people now who imagine what's the next big thing. I'm delivering on something we thought of for 20, uh, no, I was part of 20 years ago, <laughs> right? And, uh, and, and yeah, so execution and making something a reality takes a lot of patience and time and understanding what, and some things you don't control, right? Uh, so I think we're only, at least now in this phase, I'm executing on things uh, we, we sort of talked about and uh, imagined, you know, in the in early 90s, actually, believe it or not. Yeah. Yes. I'm working with a startup company to use technology to make, uh, access to language training uh, more accessible. Yes. Where do you see technology and education, and particularly making high quality education more accessible? Yeah, I think that you know one of the things that I'm most excited about uh, 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 what we're doing is along that line that it came from my daughter and it, it, it was about uh, uh, education, but in a much more how do I say natural way on a more uh, on an ongoing basis rather than sort of sitting in a classroom uh, it's alone, right? I mean, I'm not saying that it doesn't. And uh, learning, uh, you know, a lot of the learning uh, I believe happens uh, uh, with, uh, with through collaboration between friends, talking to each other, and you know, connecting with each other. Uh, and uh, so, uh, at least uh, that that's part of the inspiration beh uh, behind what we're doing, which is how do you enable uh, people to sort of uh, more easily uh, uh, connect outside the classroom and you know outside those kind of environments and learn from each other, which we which uh, which I think is the best form of learning and which we sort of naturally want to do, and how can technology enable that? And I think that is of a, a great interest. Uh, and uh, when you start adding all the all the uh, dimensions of voice, et cetera, et cetera, you know, like this product, uh, you, the fact that you can communicate uh, in different languages on day one, right off the shelf, right? Not only the product, but that because you sort of voice annotated uh, in whatever language you are, uh, and the fact that it has worldwide appeal is of great interest. So I think that's sort of all the, uh, it's great to see all these things come to realization uh, now. Uh, which again we've been talking about for 20 years or so. One more question. Yes. I'm not terribly familiar with Moksha, but I, you have a collaboration built in that's sort of multi party yes. audio, is that correct? Audio, yes. And, but not and video? Data. I'm sorry? But not video. Yeah, we didn't my, my question, my question was yeah. why not video? Yeah, uh, because, you know, uh, our, my focus initially is not to supplant web conferencing. It's almost like uh, my WebEx fame sort of follows me around, so I want to say this is not WebEx. Uh, and it's about the information, it's about the data, the focus is on uh, not seeing the other person as much, and there are lots of solutions which do that well. It's about the information, the content that you want to share and how you want to interact on that content. That is the focus. We will add video, right? Uh, but it's positioning. It is a binder for content and sharing of content and how you interact on that content uh, and how you sort of use content to sort of, uh, to sort of enhance collaborative experience. That was the focus. And just to add to this, if you go to the App Store, a lot of the feedback comes from teachers loving it, using it with their students. So it is a great way of getting students and teachers on the same page and taking annotations. So I'd say it's going to be part of the uh, school rooms of the future. Right? Yeah, in fact, one of the applications that we found, which I didn't even think of, but that's what used to do, is a lot of teachers are using it to teach music. And, you know, music has got notes, et cetera, et cetera. And now a teacher is able to assign, uh, uh, give assignments to the kids. The kids either play the piano or, you know, sing. Uh, the teacher is able to uh, listen to it offline and then make annotations on the, you know, uh, musical notes, so to speak, and say, you know, you need to change this, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, you know, so those are the kinds of applications we really wanted to emphasize, at least in the initial stages, and we'll add, we'll supplement with video. Okay. Thank you. 
Great. I think there was one more question, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, so we've heard a lot about the technical side of things, and I'm wondering, um, as those of us who are still studying and upcoming uh, leaders, how can we acquire the soft skills that will make us uh, marketable in the global economy and uh, for industry leadership? Yeah, I think that, um, I mean, that's, a, uh, you know, that's become even more important. I mean, it's sort of like you need both. Uh, for, let's talk about from a leadership perspective. Uh, you've heard people say here before, and it is very true, that uh, you have to pull, to, you know, for, to do anything of this type, you have to pull together a team. And yes, you have to, uh, it's, it's even less important whether you know the technology. I mean, you need to be able to relate to the technical people. And you need to be able to relate to your customer more than anyone else, and then to be able to translate it uh, for people to, uh, uh, how do I say, execute it uh, okay, uh, in, 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 um, in reality. So um, the question of how do you, uh, well, first, you know, that question itself says that sort of <laughs> means that you have the right attitude towards it, that you know that it exists and you need to sort of, you know, hone in on it. Uh, and uh, again, it becomes a critical part for, you know, working with different people and developing a taste, just like anything else, uh, for, uh, you, you know, the strengths and weaknesses of people. I mean, people always say, you know, you got to listen to others, but you got to really know who to listen to on what subject and what questions to ask. I mean, these, that comes with failure. Uh, <laughs> and being heard, and then moving forward. Okay. Yeah. Subra, on behalf of Stanford Bay Brazil and the Brazilian people, thank you so much. Thank this you. was really great. Thank, thank you. you.